Education. America's school system has been stuck inside the same structure, but that world has begun to change. By embracing the best ideas from a myriad of disciplines, we are transforming the shape of education. Welcome to Mash Ed Up. Reimagine education. <clears throat> Hello, good afternoon. Um, I'd like to begin with um, my most recent journey, which ended at Berkeley Unified School District. I came to Berkeley via Boston Public Schools, and boy, that was a big culture shift. I show up at the professional development, which is all principals, administrators, district officials. I'm wearing a suit and tie, and of course, being Berkeley, my colleagues are dressed in jeans and flip-flops and shorts. <clears throat> of course, the discomfort didn't end there. The superintendent addressed, asked me to stand up and address me as the person with 10 years of experience working with troubled youth. During lunchtime, one of my colleagues came up to me, pulled me aside and said, so you're going to be the principal of the continuation school. There's a kid there you've got to watch out for. He went out of his way to make his point. <clears throat> he said his name is Vincent Dominguez. This kid was a menace at my school. He went on to tell me some of the random things that he had done. He made it a point to say that, I spent, that he spent two years trying to get the kid expelled from the district. I asked him, so what happened? He said, well, the district just didn't have their stuff together, and they wouldn't expel him. His comments were not really meant to prepare me. They weren't, me weren't, weren't meant to be words of encouragement, like do a great job with him. It seemed like it was more of a call of action to me. It felt like he was saying to me, are you going to finish the job? <clears throat> I arrived early at the um, start of school, uh, at the beginning of the school year, and I was in my office getting uh, ready to, for the first day of school, and a kid walked in early and said to me, hey, can I use the, uh, can you open the restroom for me? I looked over at him without really saying anything, I just took my keys out of my pocket and I tossed them to him, and I said, can you open it? He looked at me and grabbed the keys and just walked out. And um, I thought, as he walked out, I don't even know if this kid even attends my school, actually. I just took my keys out and just tossed them to him. Now, I know what you're thinking. You know, I'm a principal. I, you know, who is this kid? I'm giving him the keys to the building. Who does such a thing? And in all my years, that was actually be one of the most mild things I've done. Um, I do that kind of work with my kids. I do it out of trust. I do it out of love. I do it out of respect. And truthfully, sometimes I'm not really thinking about it. It just is a reflex. Luckily, thankfully, he walked back in, tossed the keys back at me, and said, I opened the girls' bathroom for you also. I said, hey, my name's Victor. I'm the new principal. He said, I know. He said, my name's Vinny. <clears throat> and as he walked out, I thought, this can't be the kid. Is this really the guy that the principal warned me about? He didn't seem so menacing to me. <clears throat> I read through his file, and of course, there were pages and pages of violations, suspensions, bad behavior, notes from teachers, all of it negative, none of it constructive, no advice. It was just repeated, repeated uh, violations from him. But the one thing that I took from Vinny was that Vinny isn't alone in these kinds of perspectives that administrators and educators have over young people. The great Sir Ken Robinson, which I know many of you follow, says, today's kids have tremendous talents and we squander them away. And we educators, schools, do it pretty ruthlessly. And I've seen that happen to so many kids. In my six years um, in Boston, I would hear teachers talk and principals talk about kids as if they had given up on them completely. So where does that leave us today? <clears throat> this year, over one and a half million kids will drop out of school. And as has been mentioned earlier, there have been numerous um, efforts to change this. No Child Left Behind, as was mentioned earlier, Race to the Top Now, Standards-Based Instruction, High Stakes Testing. Um, I even remember bridging the digital divide. Uh, there was a lot of talk, if we just bridge the digital divide, we'll save kids. And yet, that statistic remains true today. It motivates my work. And with my colleagues, we, we hear these comments from kids all the time about why kids are dropping out. 
and we hear kids that say to us, classes are not interesting, I don't fit in, I don't feel like I belong. We know these facts, <clears throat> and yet we do very little to change our programs to match kids' needs. We shift the problem right back onto students, and we, as it was said earlier, describe kids as being apathetic. Here are some comments that teachers have said to me with great candor. If Deshaun doesn't want to learn, then I can't do anything for him. Pierre cannot come back to my classroom until he's ready to learn. Killian only comes to class to be disruptive. He prevents others from learning. We need to make an example of I know many of you have heard these comments. Some of you may have even had said them to your colleagues or to other principals. I'm not blaming teachers. I recall my trajectory as a teacher, and it was a pretty common arc for uh, my first couple of years. The first third of the year, I felt invincible. I felt like I could work with any kid under any circumstance. The middle third of the year, like many of you, I was thinking if I could just get that one kid out of class, I'd be able to help and uh, serve the others. And the final part of the year, you start counting the days backwards, 57 more days to summer, 56 more days to summer, and you're hoping that the next year things will be different. I blame administrators. I blame district officials. I've had so many things that happened to me by my peers in private, and they just don't seem to have the courage to raise these issues. They're broad, they're deep, and they require leadership at the site level and at the district level that many are unwilling to take on. <clears throat> so what happens? Most principals surrender. They pass uh, policies and support policies that they know don't work. They suspend kids that are just based on a, on a district procedural sheet, and they just kind of follow it along. And it's like, you violated this offense, so you get these uh, days out. They don't have the courage to challenge, nor do they feel like they have the support to make a difference. <clears throat> so maybe it's the adults, maybe it's us that become apathetic, and this is something that I wanted to talk about just a little bit more. Despite the odds, kids come to school every day hoping their trajectory will change. I regenerate my engines on one fact that I know to be absolutely true. Young people come to school experiencing treachery in their lives. The things that they've shared with me Sometimes I don't, I don't know how they do it. <clears throat> Experiencing poverty at a high level, physical and sexual abuse. Uh, uh, teachers that have given up on them and have told them don't return to class. Despite these issues, despite what they're experiencing on a daily basis, they come to school every day hoping that something's going to change. So I, I'm going to give you one challenge. On Monday morning, greet your kid. It doesn't matter which child. Take an extra second. Take one extra second to take a good look at them and ask them, how do you do it? How do you come to school every day? Because this is where the shift begins. This is how we shift as adults, turning apathy into what I call deservedness. <clears throat> the of deservedness, we treat all kids as if they are our own. If they are your own kids, if you treat them as your own, then your first inclination isn't, how do I get rid of them? You try to problem solve. You, you change, you, you, you will, you will reevaluate your expectations and your responsibilities, and you say, I must serve this kid. I cannot give up on this kid. You come up with ways, to, you find ways to come up with solutions. <clears throat> I know this is challenging, and I know that these moments are overwhelming, so I want to offer another solution to help change the narrative. There are people that have written about these uh, moments of being stuck, bell hooks, teaching to transgress. Lisa Delpit's Other People's Children, and Pedro Nogueta recently has a book out called Trouble with Black Boys. These narratives will help you shift the dialogue in your classroom, in your schools, because this is what I think our young people need today. They need to see us change our response to them rather than pushing them out. I know this doesn't happen overnight, and I know it's arduous work. <clears throat> And what I, I want to also take a second to talk about some of the outside influences that our young people are experiencing today. This is probably even more troubling because they're out alone in the world experiencing these things. <clears throat> Many people 
especially when they get into middle school and high school, have more friends that are disengaged and not attending school, that are giving up. I remember, and having experienced it more than a few times, when it was embarrassing to get in trouble at school. Nowadays, young people will get in trouble, get into a fight, cuss out a teacher, and before the kid even gets into the office, they've already captured it on their phone, they've already texted or sent it out to numerous kids, and other kids are already laughing about it in two or three classes over. Teachers also have to deal with the access to information, as has been mentioned earlier, and having to compete with that in the classroom. A phenomenon that I see growing in tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, intensity is the access that young people have to drugs, prescription pills, alcohol, blunts. It seems like they can get anything at any time. And what's equally or maybe even becoming more disturbing is the ca casual nature at which young kids are having sex or hooking up. And finally, and the most uh, tragic, is what uh, uh, young people call the game and young girls and teen prostitution. These are some of the things that uh, our teachers are having to deal with both in the classroom and at the school level. So it's a lot, it cannot be addressed alone, it can be addressed alone and it can no longer be ignored by schools either. <clears throat> My clicker isn't, there we go. So what is needed is the building of a new school, a school that will address these issues from the ground up. This was the, uh, the, the energy and the ideas that we built Realm Charter School on as the first charter school in Berkeley. Our intention is to serve kids grades through 12. Our mission is to cultivate resili re resiliency, develop critical thinking skills, and advance knowledge through rigorous studies. Our desire is to have kids prepared for the 21st century and be able to affect change. Sorry. <clears throat> At Realm, we will utilize students' in in inquisitiveness and ingenuity to navigate and create complex information networks. Realm teachers and students will collaborate through problem spaces and virtual worlds, critique emerging technologies, and answer essential questions that may make a difference in the world. Our curriculum will be rigorous and purposeful. Our instructional model is based on project-based learning. We'll begin by using the national core standards. Realm will place teachers and students in the community as researchers with the latest technology tools with the purpose of improving humanity. This methodology is designed to teach college freshman level writing while contextualizing it in social action. <clears throat> Realm partner with Stanford School, the K-12 labs to help our teachers and students master the methodologies used in design thinking. Design thinking will provide our students with the tools to execute any social issue they choose with empathy, creativity, and exactness. Realm will address the community and family issues through our wellness program. We'll partner with the city of Berkeley, their public health and mental health, and we will deliver counseling, meditation, yoga, cooking and gardening throughout the school day. At Realm, we believe 100% of our kids, there we go, 100% of our kids will be accepted to college, but we want to match students' passions and strengths with the right schools and not try to uh, target every kid to the UCs and CSUs. Realm also believes that we have a specific role in the community to be a beacon for the community to share our learning and our resources with members of the community, whether they have kids in our school or not. It's the kind of services that our communities need. <clears throat> you know, one of the most difficult things about being a principal is sitting kids down and telling them they're not going to graduate. For the obvious reasons, it hits me in places that are still difficult for me to muster up. So sitting Vinny, sitting Vinny down and telling him he wasn't going to graduate still sticks with me, that conversation. We were hanging out in my office, and I said to Vinny, I finally got up enough courage, and I said to Vinny, Vinny, you know you're not going to graduate this year. I need to tell you that. I want to make sure you're, you understand that. And he says, yeah, I know that. I said, so what are you going to do? He said, I don't know. Get a job, I guess. And I said, nah, I want you to come back for one more year. So he looked at me and he said, you'd let me? And he said it with such vulnerability and such sincerity. I wanted to tell him, are you crazy? I'd be honored to work with you one more year. But I said, yeah, I want you to come back. 
we still have a lot of work to do. He said, all right then. So then he graduated the following year. We moved him a little distance where we first found him, but it wasn't enough. I still hold the image of him graduating. It drives me to make Realm a school that will deliver the universe to every child. Join us in building a school that honors the whole child, builds capacity with families, prepares the student with the tools and the audacity to change the future. Thank you.